Hello YouTube. Today we will be looking at the Pearl Harbor attack of 1941 from the air battle perspective. We will consider why the Japanese attacked, what air and sea assets were involved, how the attack was carried out and what was the outcome. The Japanese attack had several major aims. First, it intended to destroy important American fleet units thereby preventing the Pacific Fleet from interfering with the Japanese conquest of the Dutch East Indies, now Indonesia, and Malaya, and to enable Japan to conquer Southeast Asia without interference. Second, it was hoped to buy time for Japan to consolidate its position and increase its naval strength before US shipbuilding, authorised by the 1940 Vincent Walsh Act, erased any chance of victory. Third, to deliver a blow to America's ability to mobilize its forces in the Pacific. Battleships were chosen as the main targets, since they were the prestige ships of any navy at the time. Finally, it was hoped that the attack would undermine American morale, such that the US government would drop its demands contrary to Japanese interests, and would seek a compromise peace with Japan. Planning for the attack on Pearl Harbor had begun in very early 1941 by Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto. The attack was approved at an Imperial Conference in the fall. Simultaneously over the year, pilots were trained and ships prepared for its execution. Authority for the attack was granted if a diplomatic result satisfactory to Japan was not reached. On November 26, 1941, a Japanese task force departed northern Japan en route to a position 230 miles northwest of Hawaii, intending to launch its 410 aircraft to attack Pearl Harbor, 360 for the two attack waves and 50 on defensive combat air patrol. The first wave was to be the primary attack force while the second wave was to attack carriers as its first objective and cruisers as its second, with battleships as the third target. First wave dive bombers were to attack ground targets. Fighters were ordered to strafe and destroy as many parked aircraft as possible to ensure they did not get into the air to intercept the bombers, especially in the first wave. When the fighters' fuel got low, they were to refuel at the aircraft carriers and return to combat. Fighters were to serve cap duties where needed, especially over the US airfields. The Japanese fleet was comprised of six carriers, two battleships, 15 other ships and 360 attack aircraft. These aircraft were the Mitsubishi Zero, which was the main Japanese fighter, and 60 Zeros took part in the attack the Nakajima Kate, which was the Japanese torpedo bomber, and 150 Kates took part in the attack, the Achi Val, which was the Japanese dive bomber, and 130 Vals took part in the attack. The American fleet consisted of three carriers, which were not at Pearl, eight battleships, 95 other ships, and 402 aircraft. The main American aircraft on Oahu were the Curtis P-40 Warhawk, the main American pursuit fighter, the Curtis P-36 Hawk, which was the immediate predecessor to the Warhawk, there were 40 Hawks on Oahu, a consolidated PBY Catalina, which was an American flying boat, and there were 70 PBYs on Oahu. In the centre is Wheeler Army Airfield, and on the north shore, Mokulia, Haliwa and Kahuku. Attacking the US aircraft on Oahu was an essential component of the Japanese attack plan. If the Japanese were successful in destroying a large portion of the US airplanes, then they could proceed unhindered in the skies above Pearl Harbor. Plus, a counterattack against the Japanese attack force would be much more unlikely. Thus, a portion of the first wave of Japanese planes was ordered to target the airfields that surrounded Pearl Harbor. As the Japanese planes reached the airfields, they found many of the American fighter planes lined up along the airstrips, wingtip to wingtip, making easy targets. 
The Japanese strafed and bombed the planes, the hangars and other buildings located near the airfields, including dormitories and mess halls. By the time the US military personnel at the airfields realised what was happening, there was little they could do. The Japanese were extremely successful at destroying most of the US aircraft. A few individuals picked up guns and shot at the invading planes, and a handful of US fighter pilots were able to get their planes off the ground, only to find themselves vastly outnumbered in the air. Still, they were able to shoot down a few Japanese planes. The air portion of the attack began at 7.48 a.m. Hawaiian time with the attack on Kaneohe. A total of 353 Japanese planes in two waves reached Oahu. Slow, vulnerable torpedo bombers led the first wave, exploiting the first moments of the surprise to attack the most important ship present, the battleships, while dive bombers attacked US air bases across Oahu, starting with Higham Field, the largest, and Wheeler Field, the main US Army Air Force fighter base. The 171 planes in the second wave attacked the Army Air Force's Bellows Field near Kaneohe on the windward side of the island and Ford Island in the centre. The only aerial opposition came from a handful of P-36 Hawks and P-40 Warhawks and some SPD Dauntless dive bombers from the carrier Enterprise that were stationed at uh, Evi. Naval Air Station Kaneohe was attacked some minutes prior to the attack on Pearl Harbour. Of the 36 Catalinas stationed there, 27 were destroyed and 6 others were damaged, along with 18 sailors who perished in the attack. The first Japanese aircraft destroyed in action were shot down at Kaneohe. Aviation Ordnanceman Chief Petty Officer John William Finn became one of the first Medal of Honor recipients of World War II for valor on that day. When the attack eventually arrived, Pearl Harbor was effectively unprepared. Anti-aircraft weapons were not manned, most ammunition was locked down, anti-submarine measures were not implemented, i.e. no torpedo nets in the harbor. Combat air patrols were not flying, Available scouting aircraft were not in the air at first light. Furthermore, air aircraft were parked wingtip to wingtip to reduce sabotage risks and not ready to fly at a moment's notice. Japanese Vals and Zero strafed the PBYs at Kaneohe, setting many on fire. By the time the second wave had passed, 33 PBYs had been destroyed or badly damaged. Japanese dive bombers attacked the PBYs on Ford Island, destroying 26 of the aircraft. The PBY Catalinas were flying boats with good range. Their primary role was scouting for submarines and enemy positions with an additional role of search and rescue. However, it was difficult to get parts for these aircraft. Consequently, Admiral Kimmel was reluctant to use them for extensive patrol because he calculated that once the war broke out he would need those PBYs to patrol in advance of his fleet. As a result, very few of the PBYs were used for patrol before December 7th. And most of those that did patrol did so to the south of Oahu in the direction of the nearest Japanese possession. None of the PBYs were assigned to patrol to the north, the direction from which the Japanese fleet actually came. The Navy was basically left shorthanded to do the patrolling. The Japanese aircraft attacking Wheeler concentrated primarily on the aircraft hangars and the major barracks area right in the vicinity of the hangars. The Japanese fighters concentrated on the US aircraft, 
which were generally pretty close to the hangars. US aircraft were being strafed primarily by Japanese Zeros, which were armed with both armor-piercing and incendiary bullets. The incendiary bullets contained a phosphorus element, which would cause fires to start. Despite the lack of combat readiness at the air bases, three of the P-40 Warhawks took off from Bellows Field and were immediately shot down by Japanese fighters. Several P-36s were able to take off from Wheeler Field, gain altitude and attack the Japanese planes. Once the signal had been given by Japanese commander Fujita that complete surprise had been achieved, the Japanese fighters were no longer expecting airborne American warplanes. Japanese fighters dispersed and were shooting up aircraft on the ground. At this point, the American fighters who did get airborne had good success shooting down unsuspecting Japanese planes. Examples include officers Welch and Taylor. Flying P-40 Warhawks, George Welch was credited with shooting down four Japanese planes on that day, and Kenneth Taylor was credited with two verified and two possible planes downed. At Haliwa, Welsh and Taylor jumped into their P-40s, which by that time had been fuelled but not fully armed. They attracted Japanese fire immediately after taking off, facing off virtually alone against some 200-300 enemy aircraft. When they ran out of ammunition, they returned to Wheeler to reload. As senior officers ordered the pilots to stay on the ground, the second wave of Japanese raiders flew in, scattering the crowd. Pearl Harbor, so named because of the abundance of pearls once found within its protected waters, is the largest natural harbor in the state of Hawaii. The American Pacific Fleet was moved there from its previous base of San Diego in early 1941, and the largest battleships were moored alongside Ford Island on what was known as Battleship Row. When the first wave of Japanese planes descended on Pearl Harbor, the 8 a.m. muster and flag-raising ceremonies were well underway on most of the big battleships neatly lined up on the southeast side of Ford Island. With zeros sweeping in from three directions, chaos erupted all around. As the first torpedo was striking the USS Utah on the northeast side of Ford Island, Torpedo bombers were releasing their loads against the Navy's big battleships on Battleship Row. Almost immediately, the USS Oklahoma and USS West Virginia began taking serious hits. The battleship shook violently as torpedoes slammed into their hulls. Water rushed through the holes in their sides and oil spread outward on the surface of the harbour. Bombs continued to fall, striking the other big ships moored beside the West Virginia and Oklahoma. The oil on the surface of the water ignited to send towering pillars of smoke into the blue morning skies. The Oklahoma never had a chance as three torpedoes crashed through its sides in the first minutes of the attack. As many as a dozen torpedoes may have hit the Oklahoma in the first ten minutes of the attack before the order was given to abandon ship. The USS Arizona was the largest battleship in the Pacific Fleet and one bomb struck next to the bridge penetrating the deck to explode amid a million and a half pounds of gunpowder in the forward magazine. The bridge vaporized along with Admiral Kidd and Captain Van Valkenburg. The battleship itself was broken in half. Ninety minutes after it began, the attack was over. In total, 2,403 Americans died and 1,178 were wounded. Eighteen ships were sunk or run aground including five battleships. 
All of the Americans killed or wounded during the attack were non-combatants, given the fact that there was no state of war when the attack occurred. Of the American fatalities, nearly half were due to the explosion of Arizona's forward magazine after it was hit by an Archival dive bomber. Although Japanese losses were significantly less than the Americans, the Japanese could not afford to lose experienced aircrew as they could not replace them quickly. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in how the video was made, these are the main tools. It took about six months to prepare and much of that time involved searching the net for the correct models and paint schemes, then building the airfields in the style of the time. Ship and aircraft formations were constructed in FSX at war, and all video work was created in Camtasia Studio.